the only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Okay, YouTube. <clears throat> I'm going to try to do this uh, one more time here. Uh, uh, hello? Ah. Uh, okay. Well, I'm having to monitor this um, for some reason. I did this video just a minute ago, and to bring the first subject up to you, uh, I told y'all a few, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 videos back that your movie maker program is being monitored. And if you do this quite frequently, they come in and shut off your devices. And they don't work. So they cut it off sometimes while you're in the middle of a stream and it just shuts off, quits recording. So I made this video already. Now this is new and added in. That's enough of that. Uh, that ain't the reason why I'm here. Main reason why I'm here, people, and hello, is some of the comments that I'm getting on, on, uh, the health care bill. Some of you are for it. And I guess you think I'm for it too. I'm not. Number one, it's unconstitutional. 13 reasons why. Uh, I'm not going to explain them to you and I'm not going to read them to you. There's a video on this channel right here, on this blog. You can go and listen to it, be read to you. It's right here at the end of this video. But I'm going to play a little clip of this right here and I want you to listen to it. And the reason why is I got some points to make here and I'm going to record it for you. And I'm only going to play part of it because I want you to hear it and then I'm going to let you hear another piece of one. But I want you to watch both of them so you get the whole just. Country, how are you listening? Or did you just I'm pick up the listening. phone? Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm driving, actually. I'm from Chicago to Detroit. But um, yeah. I heard you talking earlier about the government making, knowing, not knowing how to make pencils. And uh, then you talked about brain surgeons. And I happen to be a brain surgeon. So I uh, found your topic quite interesting and actually just returned from Washington, D.C., where we were reading over what the um, Obama health care plan would be for neuro advanced neurosurgery for patients over 70, which we all found quite disturbing because as our population gets older, the majority of our patients are getting over 70 that it requires stroke therapy or aneurysm therapy. And basically what the document stated was if you're over 70 and you come into an emergency room and you're on government-supported care, that you get comfort care. And Wait a minute. Where, what, what, what document and where did you – what's the this, source for this? This is uh, the um, Obama's health – Okay, everybody. You know, there's a little bit of noise changeover when I swap from one mic to the, or swap the mic around here a little bit. And then I want to show you this. But before I get to this point right here, I want to explain some more to you. This video was quite a bit longer. As you can see, we only went, you know, so far. You can go and watch, you know, it's about four minutes long. But the reason why I'm making this and I'm putting it together is because I want you to understand that Obama at one time said that he was going to uh, make it, he was going to make older people comfortable. But anyway, and they explain something else to you. Some of you think that. I don't have a heart, but I do, and I lost my parents, lost my father, uh, he was 72 years old, he had open heart surgery, died two weeks later, 
and he died because he had lung cancer and they took part of his lobe and they said it was melanoma the doctor was sure it was melanoma well it come back that it wasn't it come back that it was oak cell same as small cell lung cancer well that's one of them cancers that you don't cut on well it attacked in the weakest part of his body which was his heart he lived two weeks and I lost my mother about a year before that, a year and a half before, with the same cancer. She lived three and a half years till it got in her brain and it killed her. And I do have a heart, folks. I love my parents dearly and miss them, especially my dad right now. With all that's going on, he's a good person to talk to. But my parents could be alive if they knew this man here. And I want you to listen to this video. Now this video is an hour and 40 minutes, 48 minutes long. That's a long video. But I would appreciate it if you watched the whole thing. And spread the information to everyone you know. Now I put this video on here, but it's also on another blog, and it's got a lot of information underneath. Which, uh, in fact, I think I will take you to that, so you can actually read it yourself. So hold on a second. Now here's the video on the other blog and both links will be in the description area oh and before I get too long into this video um, I'm gonna put this video on tattoo 1009 uh, but it's only gonna be 15 minutes long and I'm sure that it's gonna run a little longer so it's gonna be on tattoo 1109 for the whole thing so I'm letting you know that now and I'll do it again at the end of the video and I won't be splitting it up on that one, but on Tattoo 1009, I'll have to. I only have 15 minutes. They took it away from me because of third party copyright. They gave me a strike, so that's neither here nor there. But anyway, you can read this information. I want you to. I want you to go look at the information. Check out the information for yourself. You've got to watch the video. There's a lot of information. There's a 1-800 number down here for cancer people that have cancer. Um, that would cure a lot of problems in our country if we could cure cancer to start with. And I think this man is on a good point of doing so. So with no further ado, I'm going to let you hear a little piece of this. And then I want you to go watch the rest of the video. years old Kristen developed a highly malignant brain tumor that had spread throughout her spine and her brain the doctors told us that we had really two options take her home let her die or bring her in for massive dosages of chemo and radiation simultaneously in either event she was going to die they were quite certain of that and very quickly uh, believing her only chance to be the standard route we gave her the chemo and radiation it burned her skull so bad she had second degree burns and her hair never came back to change her diapers, we had to wear rubber gloves because her urine was so toxic and it burnt her. At the end of six months, miraculously, she survived the standard treatment, although there was a high expectation she wouldn't. Um, she still had cancer. We were told, sorry, we've done everything we can. Now she's going to die, probably within a couple of months. My wife and I, choosing not to accept that, started reading. The first book I picked up, the third chapter, discussed Dr. Brzezinski. Um, as you may guess, I have some expertise in fraud. In fact, I'm quite certain there are enough attorneys in the room that I could be bored as an expert in fraud. 
and I conducted my own investigation. I have no doubt the man is not a fraud. I have no doubt that he does what he does out of earnest belief that his medicine works. And now you're in a position to judge for yourselves whether it works or not, but it's well established by the FDA that it's non-toxic. Eighteen months later, we took my daughter off the anti-oneoplastin. She had not died. She had no signs of tumor. She remained free for 18 months of cancer. Within a month, the cancer was widespread in her brain. We put her back on Brzezinski's. By the way, at the objections of our doctors, for some reason, felt that it had failed her. We put her back on. Within nine weeks, the tumor was completely gone. She died last July of neurological necrosis. Her brain fell apart from the radiation. The autopsy showed that she was completely cancer-free. Out of 52 cases of that disease ever, no one died cancer-free, just Chrissy. So she didn't die of a terminal illness. She died of my inability to care for her properly. And she died from bad advice. She died because there's a government institution that disseminates false information and is not looking out for the welfare of the people. You know, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> you heard that. And you can watch. Then you can read this stuff that's down here while I'm talking, if you want, or you can go to the page and look at it. I'd rather you do your own research and look it up, but if you watch this whole video, um, when we get down to the bottom here, I'll go back and click around the video a little bit and let you see, uh, just to show you, they show you some stuff. But um, you can see the 1-800 number, so please call it if you need to. Um, now that's not the right place. I'm looking for something, so. Of course, when you're looking for it, you can't never find it. But I assure you, it's in here. Well, so she's going to have to watch it. It's so big, and that thing moves so fast, I can't, I just can't find it for you. I'm sorry. I tried. But anyway, back to the point. They're not trying to help you with this health care bill. The main thing about this health care is they're trying to take your freedom away from you. That's all they're doing. They're taking your freedom away. They're not giving you anything. They're making you think they're giving you something. Because some of you have been getting it. But yet, how long is it going to last? They don't even have the whole bill passed yet. It's still being fought in court. Don't you think they're going to give you something? It's always easier to give away something when they're going to steal more from you. Not once have they ever talked about insurance. Not once have they ever talked about the uh, drug administration not once have they ever said anything about that they're the ones that passed those bills they're the ones that wrote the bill they're not in it at all neither one of them insurance ain't nothing but the mafia to start with have you noticed <clears throat> if you're old enough have you noticed since she was younger you had insurance and that was it. And then it got, they passed laws. A little bit at a time, they passed more laws. And every time they passed a law about the insurance company, uh, it's gotten worse. You used to have PIP and then you had insurance, full coverage. Well, now they got 10 different kinds of full coverage. And they got 10 different kinds of all kinds of insurance. All the insurance is different. Here in Florida, they try to take 
State Farm tried to take away uh, homeowners insurance. They wouldn't let them do that, we think. Or did they? Who knows? But the fact that because of her, you know, her, her, uh, hurricanes, they were having too many hurricanes. Well, we didn't have that in a few years, so that died down, went away. They regrouped. And they were losing money, boy. They were screaming. Oh, my God, they were screaming. They had to pay out some of that money instead of getting all the big bonuses. And they've jacked up the insurance so high on your car insurance. Now that they got a law where you've got to have insurance to keep your driver's license. See, people, they implement it slowly, little bits at a little bits by little bit. That's how they do this. That's the same thing about this health law thing. It's going to be just like any other country that tries to give you some kind of health care. It's socialized medicine, people. Socialized. Meaning that it's unconstitutional. If they had went after the insurance company and they had went after the the, the drug administration, I'd have been, I'd have been more happy. Cause that's who they needed to go after. They're the, they're the corrupt part of the drug administration to start with, the drugs and the insurance. They're the ones that have jacked up your prices so high that people can't afford to have insurance with a, you know, a, a low amount of money that they make. If they make low, you know, if they make minimum wage or whatever. So back in the day, the person that made minimum wage could afford to have insurance. Well, the insurance didn't cost that much. But now they got all them laws passed, it costs a ton of money, doesn't it? What do you think about that, people? Little bit by little bit, remember? Little bit by little bit. And for all you people out there that saying, well, we need it, we need it, we need it, that, that that's what the government's for. No, that's not what the government's for. And yeah, I know that there's a lot of people out there that needs help right now. Trust me, I know that. Hell, I need it too. Uh, anymore. Didn't used to, but it's gotten to where it's been dampened me pretty hard. That's neither here nor there. I'm not here to talk about me, nor my feelings, or what I need. I'm here to talk to y'all. I ain't been on no radio channel. I ain't been on no TV shows. This is just me talking to y'all. And I'm what I'm trying to tell y'all is. I fight for the Constitution, and there's a lot of you out there that says the system's broken, and it's never been good. You never get it back. Well, you may be right, folks. But I'm going to give you a little history lesson here. The Act of 1871. I want you to look that up. You can go on my channel, look it up, or you can go look up the Act of 1871. And you won't see the PDF. There's a couple of different ones out there that you can read. You can actually read the PDF document if you would like. Uh, that's the one I have on my channel. Um, that was an executive order, folks. That was the very first. Let me explain this to y'all. That was the very first executive order. Obama has signed how many executive orders? 900. They're all unconstitutional, by the way. Okay, every one of them. Let me explain one other thing to you. Back in the day, the first person that did that was Lincoln. That was 1871. He signed the first executive order. Do you history find out for yourself? I'm not lying to you. I have no reason to lie to you. I'm not trying to cause uh, panic or or anything like that. What I am trying to do is wake you up to the fact that we're not free, and we haven't been free for 
proof them. They just didn't implement it. Just like the NBAA bill. They haven't totally put it in gear. They ain't really grinding on it yet. But they can at any moment. But it's been passed. Along with the HR 347, which is about your First Amendment, where George Clooney, they put in jail because he was protesting in front of a, a federal bill, a building, remember? It was on the news, national news, right after they signed the bill. They had to show you what they were doing so you can remember it. It's a law now. But they don't want to push it too hard. They don't want to push the truth with it. They just want to tell you a little bit about it. So you know about it. Just like this man here. If I'd have known about him eight years ago, my mother and my father may be still alive. But of what I, I heard through his testimony, they more than likely would have been. But I'm going to tell y'all. This is a terrible situation in this country that's going on. It all starts with 1871. An executive order. It was signed by Lincoln. But let me also explain to you one other thing. At the time that was written, or the time that bill was, or executive order was put into gear, they rewrote the, con rewrote the Constitution. So the Constitution is also the one that you read now. It is not the exact original. It has changes in it. And the one of today has got all kinds of amendments. The original Constitution had no amendments. And if we were living by that Constitution, we would be a free nation. In fact, if the whole world had that, the whole world would be free. Now, some people want to put me down because of that. That's okay and fine. But we're supposed to be going through an awakening to be awake. And if we are, then we need to endorse it. And do the right thing. And the right thing is, number one, is to get rid of the Act of 1871 and the NDAL bill. Well, once you get rid of the 1871, then all the rest of them are gone. They don't mean crap. Neither does the health care bill. Neither does insurance. And neither does the Federal Reserve. You get my drift here, people. You get the drift. No more Federal Reserve. No more paper money. We go back to the gold standard. In other words, when we buy something, it won't cost us five hundred dollars. It'll cost us a gold coin. Yeah, you're talking. We talk. I'm talking gold here. It's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. It wouldn't be as expensive as it is if they wasn't playing with it to start with. Or silver. There's some other means to make money or have wealth in this country. And I got one other history buff thing for you too. I'm not racial, and this is not racial that I'm trying to put across. But there is a lot of racial people out there. And there's a lot of blacks that are racial. There's a lot of whites. I'm not disagreeing with that. But my point of it is, is this. The only reason why I'm putting this out. Is I've been meaning to do it and I just haven't had time. And I ain't got the document proof, proof to go with it. So if somebody wants to help me out with that, that would be great. Uh, the point of it is, is we're still fighting. You know, 1871 was supposed to be about civil rights. It was after the Civil War. And it was supposed to be because of the black 
the black situation. But that's really not what it's for. To start off with, Civil War wasn't fought about blacks. Civil War was entirely something different. But the main gist of that is the reason why I know that is because number one, the first black, the first black person, white person, the African person, uh, it didn't matter what color they were. If they, you know, some of those African people were not black. Um, it neither, it's neither here nor there. They were a different color of skin, maybe straight hair, maybe the curly, curly stuff. Uh, it didn't matter. My point of it is, is the first one that was brought over here was by a black man, a black senator, to be exact. You can look that up yourself and find out for yourself. Yes, we had black senators and black senators. And they wasn't considered black, they were considered English. Americanized. So, don't jump off on race all the time, people. You just you just don't have a leg to stand on. It, it doesn't mean anything. Quit fighting each other. We need to stick together. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But before you get out here and you start slamming people around and you think this is the best and that's the best, no, it's not. Do your history. We don't want to be another Nazi Germany. And that's where we're headed to right now, folks. This is hitting, headed to straight forward Nazi Germany as hard as it can go. And I mean as hard as it can go. I don't know what else to you know, I made this video and it was it was awesome and, and now I don't know how this one's gonna turn out. I was been interrupted five or six times through it and everything else, but I hope I got my point across. We the people are the ones who can make this happen. We the people means we all of us. Every one of us, police officers, judges, lawyers, uh, congressmen, doctors, senators, you know, everybody, everybody that we can get involved to fight the corrupt ones. And we have a bunch of them in office. All they're worried about is their money and your money. They're not worried about their money so much because they know they got it. They're worried about their money. And your money. And everybody else's money. That's what the loot does. So people, with that, don't forget that if it's over, which I know it is, if it's over the time limit, only 15 minutes is going to be on Tattoo 1009. And the other, the full length, the whole length of the video is going to be on <clears throat> Tattoo 1109. That's my other channel. And if you haven't subscribed to that one yet, please do so because I don't know how long this one's going to stay up. If you agree with me. If you don't, then, uh, you know, more power to you. Much love to you. And I hope one day you're not the one on the other end of the pill that they're giving you because I told you so. Much love, y'all. Good night.